If P and N are integers such that P is greater than N is greater than zero. So this tells us since P is strictly greater than N, that means that they're two different integers. P is the larger of these two different integers. And that they're both positive. They're both greater than zero. And they tell us that P squared minus N squared is equal to 12. P squared minus N squared is equal to 12. Which of the following can be the value of P minus the value of P minus N? So one thing that might jump immediately out at you is that you could factor p squared minus n squared. That this is a difference of squares. And why, why it especially jumps out at you is when you factor it, one of the factors is p minus n. So this could be factored as, this could be factored as p plus n times p minus n. This is just factoring a difference of squares. Is equal to 12. Is equal to 12. Now, what we essentially have is the product of two expressions is equal to 12. The each of expressions, this expression right over here, p plus n, this is the sum of two positive integers. This is the difference of two positive integers. So both of these are going to be positive. Both of these are positive integers. The reason why we know p minus n is a positive integer is they tell us that p is greater than n. So this is going to be a positive value. So let's think about all the different combinations of positive integers that we could take their product and get to 12. So it could be, and this of course, this of course is going to be the larger of the two. This is going to be the larger of the two, and this is going to be the smaller, smaller of the two. So let's see. You could have 12 times 1. 12 times 1 is definitely equal to 12. You could have, let's see, you could have 6 times 2, which is equal to 12. You could have 4 times 3, which is also equal to 12. So these are essentially all of the contenders for p plus n and p minus n. So let's think about how, how, we, can, how we can rule some of, these, some, of these scenarios, some of these scenarios out. So let's take the first scenario. Let's say that p plus n, p, let me write it in green. So the first scenario, let's say that p plus n, is equal to 12, and p minus n is equal to 1. p minus n is equal to 1. Well, we could solve for p here. We could add the left-hand sides. The left-hand sides, the n's cancel out. You're left with 2p. And you add the right-hand side, you get 13. p, you divide both sides by 2, you get p is equal to 13 over 2. Now, this is not cool because this, does, this contradicts one of our first assumptions that p needs to be an integer. This right over here is not an integer. So p plus n cannot be 12 and p minus n cannot be 1. So p minus n cannot be 1. So actually, we can rule this out right over here. p minus n cannot be 1. Now, let's think about this scenario where p plus n is equal to 6. p plus n is equal to 6. That's the larger of the two factors. And p minus n, and p minus n is equal to 2. Well, same idea. We can add the left-hand side. We're left with 2p. And then the right-hand side, we get 6 plus 2 is equal to 8. Divide both sides by 2. You get p is equal to 4. And if p is equal to 4, Then you see, well, you see 4 plus what is equal to 6? Well, 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. n is equal to 2. And that works out here. 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. So this is completely consistent. Both of these are positive integers. They're different positive integers. p is greater than n. So it's completely possible that p minus n is equal to 2. So this is completely a possible value of p minus n. And then let's look at this, let's look at this last, so this one works out. Let's look at this last scenario. So we have p plus n is equal to 4, and p minus n, p minus n is equal to 3. Well, same idea. The left-hand side, you get 2p is equal to 7. Well, once again, when you divide both sides by 2, p is equal to 7 halves. This is not an integer, just like here. This cannot be the case, because p needs to be an integer. In this case, p is being forced. If, if p plus n was 4 and p minus n is 3, then you are not going to have, then p is not going to be an integer. So this is also, this is also not a possibility. Now, 
we could have ruled this out even without doing that exercise. Because if p minus n was 4, if p minus n was 4, then p plus n would have to be 3. But p plus n is going to be the larger of the two values. So p minus n with even if even if this were, even if this were a possible scenario, even if we didn't end up with a non-integer right over here, we could have gotten p minus n to three, but not to four. P minus n is going to be the less the lesser of the two factors between if, if four and three were even contenders, but we know here that they aren't. But anyway, we can rule that one. We can rule that one out as well. So the only possible value of p minus n, or the one which of the following can be a value of p minus n? Two.